there's a Hebrew phrase. It's, uh, it goes, en malasot. It's kind of like, what to do. <laughs> what to do, it is what it is. Um, the Blues go down by 28 points to Port Adelaide in round five. Nine goals, 14. 68 to 15, goal 6, 96 at the MCG on a Saturday night in really just the same sort of situation that I have seen my whole life and a lot of us have seen for the last 20, 25 years. It's just nothing's really changed. It was the the build-up after a couple of wins against sides who were kind of around about where we are, middle of the pack. And the idea was that last night was another one of those challenges that we met with a final side, genuine final side, and it's, you know, the measuring stick and you see where you're at and, you know, see how far away you are or you see how much you've progressed. And um, unfortunately for the fans, um, there was just a real, I don't know if lackluster is the word, just poor, just not good enough, just outclassed, beaten. We're just, <laughs> we're just not good enough. That That's really what it is. Couldn't really summarize it really quickly there and just say we're not good enough. We had about 32,000 people there and um, it's hard. It's hard to watch that happen again because you just, you just see the division grow amongst the fan base. You see the fighting and the bickering and, uh, you know, you see, you just, yeah, it's just toxic. It's hard to watch. It's hard to watch the reaction and it's hard to watch our fans hurt. It's hard to watch good people hurt. Um, but such is life. It's, uh, it's not roses. It's, uh, it's, it's shit. It's tough. It's dark. And you've got to try and keep plugging along and find positives to, to motivate you. But uh, I felt for the first time last night, this is hard to say, but I felt for the first time last night, I, I watched hope disappear completely. It was almost like people were giving them one more chance. Um, there were a few things at play where we thought were in our favor, poured a little bit banged up. Even during the game, they took players that were a little sore. And obviously, so did we. We have quite a few outs, but the MCG factor, the confidence we've built, you know, ready to meet the challenge. And we didn't just fall short. I think that's probably the, the hard part. I mean, if we had have had the 2020 version of the Port Adelaide game last night and we lost by a point or whatever it was after the siren... Not that we'd be happy, but I feel like it'd be, you know, some losses you come away and you think, gee, we really, really pushed them to the brink. Whereas last night, it wasn't it wasn't like that at all. Um, I didn't hate the first quarter. I thought it was competitive enough. Um, I know that we won the, what was it, the inside 50 count and some of these other, you know, key stats and, and, and metrics, but it just never really just never really looked likely for me anyway. Um, the whole day yesterday was, was fascinating. Went to watch the reserves and uh, they were up by five goals at th- three different points in the game and then lost by a point at the death. And you just you just saw it happening. And I'm going to tie it into the, the seniors as, as to why I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the reserves. But you just saw it happening. They did everything they could to lose that game. And you just felt like, we're going to give away a free kick here in the dying stages or we're going to get a goal scored against us. And lo and behold, we did. And it's just, it just feels like it's it's something within the club. It really does. It feels like there's a, whatever you call it, a curse, a stain. There's something, something, someone along the way. It's almost like bad karma has come to this age, this generation. Something happened in the past that um, the universe or the gods or whatever it is you believe in, is punishing us now for. It's just a stink. There is a stink around this football club. And it's all, I mean, I feel like when life challenges you, you know, you fail, you fail to succeed. You have to keep failing. That's the whole point. You keep failing, you keep getting to tests and you keep challenging. And then eventually you fall over the line. You learn how to succeed. You learn how to win. And then you replicate the behavior. I just didn't feel like last night we pushed the boundaries to success last night. I felt like 
I felt like we accepted it last night. You know, I felt like at points, even midway through the third quarter, it was just like the body language that I was watching. And again, I don't speak for everyone. I just speak for myself, but I felt like I was watching guys who accepted their fate as opposed to being determined enough to change their fate. And that's, that's dark. That's, that's, that's deep. That's, that's a, that's a, that's not just failure. That's just a, you know, I don't know. And then, you know, it's going to be rinse and repeat. Why are we playing Murphy? Why are we playing Betts? Why are we playing Casper? Blah, 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 blah. Why is Teague doing this? Assistant coaches, board, president, CEO, blah, 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 which we're all trying to look for something, someone to blame, you know, I think that's just human nature. You want to try and find the problem so you can then give the solution. But I don't think anyone knows what the issue is. Apart from we all know it's a there's a, there's a losing stain. That's what we all know. We know that we we just cannot break through at the moment. We just cannot break through and go to the next level. Um, are we not ruthless enough? Are we don't have a winning mentality enough? Is it the press conference, the words that Teague said about, you know, we may lose, but we want to play our way, like all of that sort of stuff. I don't know. It's all combined for me, but that was, that was really disappointing last night. That was, uh, I went, I went to the, the president's club function. I chose the game last night. I get one a year as a, as a sponsor. And so I chose that game last night. It's my birthday today as, as a part of filming this. So I thought, you know, it's going to be a special weekend. Hopefully get a win. It'll lead into the birthday. It'll just be good vibes. And and um, the president, Michael Judasher, um, did his, his speech. Great speech. Started off talking about the theme song. And um, obviously there's a bit of a, a controversy or not a controversy. There's been some accusations about the song and how we should change it. And uh, he spoke really strongly about you know, how we're not going to change it and, and gave great reasons why. And then um, he spoke about how he can feel the confidence building in the group. And he thinks, to, you know, he thought tonight was going to be, or last night, I should say, was going to be another positive um, result. And oh, I believed it. I think he be- he definitely believed it. Got no issue about that. I mean, all these board members, they believe it. <sighs> Imagine believing in something week after week only to let you down. It's like when you get cheated on. <laughs> And then, and then your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whatever it is, however you live your life tells you, oh, you just don't trust me. Like with no trust, there's no, there's no relationship and they're right, but you don't trust them because they fucking do it over and over again. It's kind of like what it is. That's kind of like where we're at. They just, yeah. And you know what? It's people like me that are the problem. Last night at the function to, um, Lovely girls who were working at the function came around. They were um, selling raffle tickets. You know, you can buy one for eight or whatever it was or three for 20 or eight for 50. Yeah, of course I'll buy three raffle tickets and support the club. Of course I will. And they had this, um, they had this like uh, competition like with a, a margin. So there was like, oh, do you want to play the margin game? And, oh, what's the margin game? Yeah, tell me about that. They're like, oh, you know, you get a card, you get a scratchy, it's $10. You pick the home team or the away team, and then under the scratchy, you get a a margin. And that's going to be, you know, if you are correct in that margin, you win a prize. Of course, I'll buy that $10. No worries. So I get my scratchy, and I pick the home team, obviously, Carlton, and uh, it comes up with 63 points. And before the game, I'm seeing that, and I'm thinking, it's an omen. We're going to win by 10 goals. You know, like... Wake up, wake up. We need some, oh mate, we need, we need therapy. You need many years of therapy. Many, many, many fucking years of therapy. (laughs) We need, we need something. I don't know what we need. We need something. And uh, for the sake of not wanting to ramble, I just wanted to get the thoughts down and condense them. It's difficult. It's going to be difficult. I I felt like a lot of people just lost faith last night, as I said, and I don't blame them. And then I saw people complaining about people not showing up. And you know what? I I know a lot of people who pay for memberships and don't go to the footy because they still want to support the club, but they don't believe in what's going on right now and they don't want to get hurt and they don't want to waste their time. And you, how can you blame them? 
And people, you know, will say, well, you're not real supporters. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Of course they are. But they don't trust the team. Like... And you've got idiots like me who just show up every week, drink the Kool-Aid every fucking week. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I wonder if this will ever like get to me if, and I'll just give up. I really do wonder. I don't think I will. But um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's not the end of the world. We're going to have a nice little run at some point. We're going to win a couple. We're going to lose a couple. It's just part of the journey. It is. And one day, you know, when we have won this flag and, and, and you know, lift up the Premiership Cup, these, you know, punches in the mouth along the way are going to make it all worthwhile. And, and that's really what we just hold our hat on and we just hope. Because, you know, without hope, you do, you do not have life if you don't have hope for something. So uh, I would hope that we haven't... See, I'd hope we haven't lost the hope. But yeah, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to watch them play like that. It's very difficult to, just to watch the, the same old story unfold. I almost know, we almost know how this plays out. We just do. It's, yeah, I didn't really see too many signs last night of a breakthrough or something towards a breakthrough. There was an acceptance and that's poor. And, you know, we'll do the play ratings and, you know, I'll go into some of the specifics because there were some players there who, who are leaders of the club and who, you know, set the tone with that give up attitude. So yeah, it is what it is. Uh, I'm going to give the player of the game. So player, our sponsor, they make granola. Beautiful people and uh, a beautiful product. Player of the game, I'm going to give it to Sam Walsh because he is a he's a warrior. He's a great one. I thought Pitternet was good as well, to be honest. There's another positive. Um, Sam Walsh, yeah, just keeps going. And I just hope that the losing doesn't get to him and then he starts playing with a lack of energy like his captain last night. So yeah, that's that. Um, but it's going to be a therapy session. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, your thoughts, your feelings, um, express yourself. You guys do a pretty good job of it in the comments. Um, I love when, you know, you guys go into detail. It really gives me something to ponder. And, uh, yeah, we ended last night in the fan cams, just the way we deserved it with tiny little balls on my head. <laughs> so anyway, have a great one, guys. Um, have a great Sunday and I guess we'll just fight to live another day. Go the Mighty Blues. Bam!